Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence is the man behind Valor Fights. And, of course, their next fight card come up here August the 13th, headlined by the middleweight title fight, Sid Wheeler, taking on the veteran Joe Riggs, Tim Lloyd. Tim, man, as always, I appreciate the time. It's been a while since we've had an opportunity to talk, and obviously a lot of things has happened with your promotion over the past couple months, and I think most notably would be uh, your relationship with Flow Combat. You know, obviously you're still pretty you know young into that experience, but what have you been able to see kind of – how much this has impacted your promotion in terms of maybe just the popularity of, of people just knowing the name Valor Fights? You know, yeah, it certainly uh, it certainly helped. Uh, I think uh, you know them already having that established base with the grappling and and the uh, and the wrestling uh, leading up to uh, their their uh, dive into combat sports, uh, you know, the kickboxing and MMA and whatnot. Uh, that certainly uh, provided a, a great you know, kind of opening fan base uh, that was already established. And, and of course, now, uh, you know, that we've, we've been rolling for uh, for several months here with those guys. It's, uh, it's gotten better and better for sure. And, of course, you know, you've got a big fight car come up here on August the 13th, Valor Fights 36. Uh, you know, you know, people, when they ask me about Sid Wheeler, because I said, look, this is a guy's name you have to be familiar with when you're following the regional scene and, and who, who are the up-and-coming guys. One thing Sid does not lack is confidence. He's he's yeah. a, he's a very confident fighter, but I mean this is I mean you talk about that step up in competition, Kendrick Myrie now now to Joe Riggs. First off, how did this fight kind of come together? You know, um, you know you're right. It doesn't it does not lack in confidence. He uh, he's very sure of himself. He uh, he has uh, you know a strong mindset that he you know he's going to make it to the next level. So. You know, Sid's the kind of guy that wants tough fights. I say that a lot. He he doesn't ask for for fights to build his record or you know, guys to you know to look good uh, in front of. He wants guys that uh, you know it's going to benefit him to beat those guys and, and and elevate his stock. So, you know, in that regard, he's he's great deal is uh, because you know a lot of guys aren't like that, and uh, I'm sure you know. Uh, so they you know to, to get a guy that's willing to to just you know fight the best that we can throw at him is uh, you know it's refreshing to say the least. But you know, in this case, uh, coming off the Myri fight. Uh, Oddly enough, uh, it was Kendrick himself who messaged me a few weeks afterward and said that uh, you know, Joe Riggs had an interest in fighting Sid uh, and that his manager was going to be getting in touch with me. And uh, I was like, okay, cool, you know, sounds good. You know, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's cool, you know, I, I, I'm flattered, you know. So mm-hmm. uh, anyway, it was uh, you know, maybe a week later, I got a call from uh, Chuck Weichert, his, uh, his manager, and uh, he said uh, the same thing, essentially, that uh, they were interested in, in coming out and uh, you know, Joe was looking to make one more run uh, towards uh, towards the big show. You know, he'd just been cut and was looking to make one more run at it and, uh, you know, uh, knock off some uh, some regional fights. And, you know, Sid, uh, you know, at the same time, looking looking for these, you know, tough fights I mean, against guys that can elevate him. So it was just, uh, you know, immediately clicked in my head. You know, that's, uh, that could be awesome. And, of course, obviously, I mean, I've already had a chance to talk to uh, Joe and, and Sidney about this fight. And, you know, it's, it's a, st- a big step up in competition. Uh, you know, for Sid Wheeler, and you know, you're you're just trying to give guys, especially there in that Tennessee, Kentucky area, uh, an opportunity to thrive. I mean, in terms of kind of what has happened over the past couple months for your promotion, do you do you kind of feel like, uh, you know, now your job is pretty much easier because instead of maybe you contacting fighters, they're now contacting you because of of the things that have gone on with your promotion over the past couple months. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, we we've never really struggled, you know, to get people to come fight for us. We've we've always had, you know, a good amount of interest at least uh, regionally, you know, people that wanted to come compete. But um, you know, since since we started, uh, you know, kind of raising the bar some, it's it's been uh, even easier because, you know, really we've got guys. In, in fact, now the hard part is is whittling down and figuring out who you want to use and who you have to sit because. Uh, literally, I mean, you know, from from Joe coming all the way up from Arizona, we've got guys uh, from uh, uh, from uh, Elevation there in Colorado that are wanting to come out. Uh, several teams from Florida, like Billions, and, and several teams down that way, American Top Team, they're all wanting to come up and and compete. So there's uh, you know there's the the, the powerhouse gyms, you know, from all over. The uh, Fairlongo got some guys that were wanting to come down. So you know, there's several uh, of the big the big the big name gyms are are now jumping on and, and wanting to come compete and so it gives us a you know an even broader scope of uh, potential matches that we can make and 
you know, up until this point, you know, the southeastern region, especially our our region, is was kind of in is kind of behind the the curve, uh, comparatively speaking, to the West Coast or, you know, the other areas in the Midwest that have that were the MMA's just been around longer. We've only had an MMA legal here for I believe seven years now, six seven years. So, uh, we were a little bit behind the learning curve there, and uh, it, essentially we were having to build our scene up. And, uh, and and make these guys these regional stars here to where they're you know they're ready to start taking on national level uh, competition. You know I understand with you know the regional scene you got to have the ticket sellers on the card and how how do you kind of as a promoter kind of balance that fact of you know you want to get the guys that are going to put butts in the seats but also trying to bring in guys from from out of the state out of the area how do you balance the, the mix of those two? You know, it's not an easy formula. You know, you got to find that happy meeting. And, um, you know, in the past, uh, you know, we've been guilty as, as uh, lots of promotions on the regional level have been, uh, you know, of, of, you know, for lack of a better word, feeding your, uh, your, your better draws and, and building their records up and, and whatnot. You know, when you're in the, in the growing stages and you need to put those butts in the seats and you need to be able to pay the bills, you know, in order to, to reach that next level, that, that was kind of what, you know, we did as, as did everyone. But uh, now we've kind of turned the corner where, you know, we really are against that kind of thing. We really don't want to put on subpar fights uh, at the uh, risk of uh, damaging the, uh, you know, the prestige of the promotion. So uh, now we we're to the point where we don't have to do that. You know, we can, uh, you know, we've got a little bit more of the upper hand uh, to, to say, you know, you guys want to fight, you're going to fight a tough fight, you're going to fight a fight uh you know that's a that's a con, uh, a competitive fight. We're going to pay you, uh, you know, fair for it, and uh, you know that's that's the way it's got to be. What else can we expect on August the thirteenth? Man, like I don't, uh, you know, every time like I guess I said it's it's our job to to say this is you know this is the best fight ever, this is the best card ever. But I mean, really, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's definitely the best card we've ever put on, and I feel safe to say that it's the best uh, you know card that the state of Tennessee's ever seen. You know, really, top to bottom, it really is. Uh, it really is spectacular, you know. Beyond the main event, we've got uh, <clears throat> we've got two other title fights, two other pro title fights. Uh, we've got uh, Cody Gableman taking on CJ Hamilton for our first ever pro flyweight title, and both those guys are are top notch pro- uh, prospects. You know, CJ's eight and four, coming off a big win at Legacy where he looked great. Uh, Cody Gableman's five and two, and uh, probably the top flyweight from the Cincinnati Ohio Valley. So, you know, that's two uh, guys from two different regions. The best guy. Uh, at flyweight in each region, they're going to battle, and, and hopefully uh, the winner can get a look at uh, you know from Zuba or the UFC, I guess I should say. And yeah, yeah, we we all know what, what's going on <laughs> over the next couple of months. Uh, right. W M E I M G. Sometimes even when I'm writing that, I kind of I, I kind of mess up just on the spelling of that. But we're we're still kind of we're still probably yeah. a couple of months away for for yeah. everything uh, officially. It doesn't roll been, off your tongue quite so easy. Uh, you bring that up as obviously we're, you know, just, you know, just over a week now that it's, it's been officially announced that ownership has changed. Have you noticed anything different in terms of you know, maybe do you see more sponsors that, you know, maybe we're not totally on board about, you know, sponsoring may event, maybe that they say, man, if the WME IMG agency is getting this business, maybe we need to look into it. I mean, obviously we're very early, but have you seen any any change in the industry? No, I can't say that I've seen it yet, but uh, I definitely will agree with you that that's a that's a good potential uh, you know possibility uh, that we will definitely be uh, keeping our <laughs> eyes and ears open uh, for you know uh, moving forward, you know, trying to expand our our sponsorship base as well and, uh, and other not so uh, you know, typical, I guess, MMA uh, type businesses. <laughs> I also got to ask you this. I mean, obviously, there's. I don't think the the bill is going to pass, but you know, the Ali Act to MMA is that something you're paying attention to a lot to see what that potentially what it may cause you to have to, uh, you know, maybe start reporting some new things that maybe you don't have to right now. I mean, are you paying attention at all, or is it one of those things of, hey, if the bill gets passed, then I'll then I'll really uh, I'll de- delve into it. You know, honestly, the latter, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, the legal aspect of things and uh, commissions and, and laws, I, I found that it's really kind of out of my control. <laughs> and uh, we kind of have to just roll with the punches, you know. Uh, we're, uh, you know, we're really, there's there's not going to be much on my end that uh, that we could probably do to, uh, you know, to affect the outcome of that regardless. So, you know, if it passes, we'll, uh, you know, cross that bridge when it gets to it. So I mean, as we start to look past Valor Feist thirty six, what's what's the rest of the year in store for you? 
you know, um, we're, uh, we're looking to go to Nashville for the first time, uh, here in the fall. That's kind of, uh, our big plan for the, for the, for the latter half of the year is to get into, uh, get into Nashville. That's uh, the next, uh, major market, I guess, uh, that makes the most sense for us. Tennessee's a very, it's a long state, you know, from one end to the other is mm-hmm. seven hours. So, uh, you know, Nashville's still about three hours, uh, west of our normal operating market. So it will still be, uh, a bit of a challenge for us, but at the same time, one that we've been kind of eyeing for about a year now. So that's kind of our, our main thing. And then, uh, potentially looking at, uh, you know, moving into Georgia and uh, some of the other surrounding states. I know you've got, you know, some Georgia based fighters that, that do compete for you. Is that a, a big motive in, in why Georgia is, is on your uh, radar? Yeah. Yeah. We've got, we've got several guys that come up from Georgia that, uh, that love competing for us and, you know, and have really been vocal about wanting to get us down and into their home, home region to, to do events. And, you know, it, we're already running in Chattanooga, which is right. I mean, it, it, we're in Georgia already, essentially, you know, the, the venue that we run in Chattanooga is that on exit one on the state line, we go another mile or in Georgia. So we're already, uh, we're already knocking on the door there. So it wouldn't be that big a step. And of course, the hour fights 36 coming up here on August the 13th, several title fights, including the middleweight title fight at Sid Wheeler defense title against Joe Riggs. Tim, man, as always, appreciate time and uh, look forward to seeing these fights, man. Awesome. Thanks for the time, Jason. Take care.